man, that turned out really freaking sweet. If I do say so myself. This here, my friends, is a Raspberry Pi. It's an old Raspberry Pi. It's been sitting in a drawer not doing anything for years. So I had set up a solar assistant previously that's running on an Orange Pi, another single board computer. And I did a video about setting that up and you can watch that here or over here, wherever it pops up. Got it set up to just go to a static IP address within my network and my dashboard pops up. Again, I've got this Raspberry Pi just sitting around not really doing anything. That should be plenty of horsepower just to run what I'm trying to accomplish. So let's dive into it. As always, you can find links for all of this stuff down there in the description underneath that like button. I'm going to go ahead and re-image the Raspberry Pi so we can start from scratch, show you exactly how I got this set up. You just get the Raspberry Pi imager. One thing you definitely need to keep in mind is choosing your operating system, using the Raspberry Pi imager. There's a lot of different options for you. This quickest, simplest, easiest one to do, especially with an older Raspberry Pi like I have, is just the 32-bit Pi OS. It's based on Debian. It's got a GUI desktop interface, and that's what you're going to need to display your dashboard, right? When we're setting this up, you can do this later, but it's easiest just to do it when you're setting it up during the imaging process. We'll hit the little gear icon, change our host name. I'm going to change it to solar, enable SSH and use password authentication, set your username and super secret password. I wonder what that is. If you want to go wireless, this would be an easy time to configure your Wi-Fi setup, save and write. All your data is going to be erased. If you're okay with that, hit yes. And now this will take a couple of minutes. We'll be back. And we're finished. And we're gonna pop out our SD card and we're gonna plug this bad boy in for the first time. Now, because you have SSH enabled, remember we did that in the last step, you should be able to grab the IP address and log into it directly with an SSH application. I'm gonna use PuTTY. You're gonna have to find your IP address of the device that you just built. You can log into your router, of course, or you can use something like Angry IP Scanner. We can see within the first scan, the first couple of seconds, so, we're going to bring up putty log into the ip address you will get this error message the first time you log in now you're going to put in the username and password that you created boom goes the dynamite what we're going to be doing is putting our raspberry pi into kiosk mode the very first thing we're going to do is update the device to its most updated and patched state sudo apt um, update. Now we are updated. We're going to go to upgrade to the most recent versions. Sudo apt full dash upgrade dash whoops y. And now this will probably take a couple of minutes. So we'll be back after this is completed. Eventually. All right. That finished up pretty quick. Now we want to reboot the device after we've done our updates and upgrades. We're just going to enter sudo reboot and be disconnected. Not going to take very long to get reconnected for the device to bring itself back up. There we are. We're logged back into the device now. A couple of things that we're going to want to set up in our kiosk mode unclutter which removes the mouse pointer from the screen. Pretty easy to get and install these. It's just sudo apt install xdo tool unclutter. Now we're going to want to set up our Raspberry Pi to automatically boot to the desktop menu without having to log in first. If the Raspberry Pi loses power, it'll automatically pick up pretty much where it left off, boot right back into the desktop environment. So we're going to do that in our config file. Uh, we will start with system options. And then we'll go down to uh, boot and auto log on, option five. Then we're gonna go down to option four, desktop auto log on. When it comes back to the main menu, uh, you know it's completed. You can just hit the over button to go down to finish. Would you like to reboot now? Yes, and we get disconnected. So we've rebooted. We can see this is the desktop of our Raspberry Pi. I've just got this set up on my capture card right now. 
we're going to create and open a file that is with the name auto start. So this is where we're going to write our script for automatically starting our process. In this case, our kiosk. This is the command that you're going to want to put in. Again, links will be in the description. Take out the dollar sign before it. Um, we're going to add at x set s off at x set dash dpms and at x set s no blank. What essentially that does is disables power management settings and stops the screen blanking out after a period of inactivity. We're actually gonna come down and do an at chromium dash browser dash dash kiosk. Here, if you have a website that you wanna statically show, put in your website here. We're just gonna put in a static IP address that's accessible within my network. From here, you're pretty much done. You just hit Control X, it's gonna ask you to save, say yes, and name the file, hit enter. For me, for what I'm doing, I'm done. We're gonna do a pseudo reboot and jump over to our full screen. This is how we're gonna test and make sure that all of our settings and configurations are correct before going out and putting it into production. So if we just sit and wait for a couple of minutes, should auto populate, here we are. Pretty simple process. I mean, realistically doing this for the first time, you can probably get this done in about an hour. Really, you can do this with just about any Linux device, right? It doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi. It can be another single board computer or SBC. So for example, say you've got a Grafana dashboard that's telling you statistics about your network or about VMs running in your environment that you want to be able to show in a single dashboard quick and easily, maybe outside of your network rack. Uh, this could be a good option for that as well. But there we are. All it needed was to reload itself. Let's go out and plug this into the screen that we've got this on and we'll go from there. I'll meet you out there. Later. Oh man, that turned out really freaking sweet. If I do say so myself, out in the solar powered crypto mining shed, got my batteries over there, my solar inputs and stuff all right here. This actually turned out pretty freaking good in my opinion. You could use this same process in the same application just about anywhere that you need to see data on a regular basis, populate for your own data got the Raspberry Pi just kind of tucked away right here for now. All right, so I think that turned out pretty good. What do you think? This was a great option for what I was trying to accomplish. Hopefully you learned something from this. You're able to put this kind of information to work for you for what you're trying to do, or at least get your gears to turn in and, and think, hey, what else can I do with this sweet little SBC? If you made it this far in the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And of course, Thanks for watching.